Hello Tube Amp fans, or Valve Amp fans as we call ourselves down here in the, uh, the lower parts of the planet. Um, I don't have uh, a groovy new amp build to show you this time, but um, something that could be useful. It's uh, just some recent learnings. It's always when something goes wrong uh, that you learn something uh, with this sort of thing. Um, like many of you out there, I'm not a qualified electronics tech. Uh, I haven't done a university course uh, in the subject, haven't even done a trade course in uh, electrical work. Um, like many of us, I've just uh, bumbled along and managed not to kill myself in the process. Uh, but uh, every time you, uh, you build something, and particularly when it doesn't work or doesn't work properly, you learn something and uh, that's what today's little uh, video lecture is about so if you're interested I'll just give you a little teaser uh, it's in the title anyway single-ended amps uh, they're noisy little buggers and uh, they can be made even noisier than necessary if you make some mistakes uh, so um, if that's happened to you uh, and it's caused some head scratching. Stick around, there might be a few little answers for you. Back a little while ago, I bought one of those uh, Joyo Sweet Baby Amps, the JTA-05. Uh, as you probably know, they're pretty much a, a dead copy of the Tweed Fender Champ 5F1 circuit um, very cheap and um, if you want uh, a vintage style tube amp uh, that's uh, that's good to go for rehearsals and so forth then it was uh, it was pretty good value um, it did have a 5ar4 rectifier instead of the 5y3 which sort of stiffened things up and increased the voltages to make it a bit more rock and roll i suppose uh, and it was a bit noisy and, um, well, look, I just couldn't help myself. I started to uh, mess around with it, and uh, it ended up I made it even noisier than it was before. Let's have a look. Now, I'm doing this little video after the fact, so I can't actually demonstrate uh, the horrible amount of hum and the noises that this thing was producing, but I'll just talk you through uh, what happened. So basically I kept the chassis uh, and the power and output transformers from the original Chinese made amp and I put in NOS uh, tubes actually instead of a 12AX7 that's a, what is it a 6N2P it's a Russian uh, 6 volt uh, 12AX7. You have to wire the uh, the socket a little bit differently. But 12AX7s, particularly NOS, are bloody expensive these days. So I've bought a bucket load of these uh, Russian tubes and I'm putting them into my own builds instead of 12AX7s and they're going gangbusters. Anyway, I've gone off the subject a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to put up a, a copy of the circuit diagram. It is basically a 5F, or well, it's a 5F2A Tweed Princeton because it's got uh, a tone knob and a 10 inch speaker. Uh, I managed to squeeze in a 10 inch instead of the standard eight. Um, so it's a Princeton clone, um, but that's bugger all difference between that and the, and the little Tweed Champ of the 50s. So, but you all know that. Um, the values of the capacitors and resistors, though, I've taken from the Kalamazoo number no. one amp, which is a favorite with harp players. And I'm a, a harp player, not a guitar player. So that was one of the reasons for making some changes. Anyway, it's a bit of a dog's breakfast in there, but uh, I thought I was doing all the right things to uh, reduce hum. So I put in extra filtering. There's a little um, 
four Henry choke and an extra filter cap. I'm, I'm allowed to poke my finger in here because the uh, I've bled off the um, the capacitors and it's unplugged. And I've done things like a shielded cable for uh, the signal, uh, particularly in the early part of the preamp, and also there's the, the signal going to the 6V6 as well. And um, I thought I was doing well with the, uh, the ground scheme. Uh, I tend to use the system where you've got uh, all of the grounds from uh, the power supply going to uh, a single terminal on the chassis near the power transformer and then I usually have a little wire bus going along the top and collecting all of the grounds from the preamp from the pots and uh, all the other circuit grounds onto that bus and then connecting them to one point only on the chassis where uh, the input is. Um, but I did come unstuck. One of the problems was that uh, I had a switchcraft type uh, input jack and that was grounding itself onto the faceplate. Uh, now you can get isolating washers uh, so that you can use the switchcraft jacks. I'll just show you that in a minute. Okay, let's see if I can do this uh, one-handed. So there's your familiar switchcraft uh, socket. This is a switching type, and it's uh, got the long thread, which you need if you're going to do what I'm about to show you. Now, um, even if you've got a plastic uh, panel on the front of your amp, um, below that there's the metal chassis, and that's going to be touching... Uh, the base of the, the socket. So it's going to make an extra grounding connection uh, that you don't really want because that's going to cause a ground loop. So you've already grounded the socket to uh, your grounding bus, but it's also being grounded uh, to the chassis here. So we want to eliminate that. Now the answer is, well one answer anyway, is uh, uh, to use shoulder uh, washers. Uh, for some reason they seem to be very difficult to access here in Australia so I've had to uh, get a bunch from the United States and pay ridiculous amounts of postage. Okay so there are two isolating washers or shoulder washers as you can see here and I've got those face to face. You do have to drill out the hole in the chassis a bit bigger as you can imagine uh, but the idea is that um, the uh, the metal of the chassis goes in between the two washers and the uh, the input is completely isolated from uh, the chassis and that's going to eliminate some of your hum um, the other option of course is to use a Marshall style or Cliff brand uh, socket which is plastic it's got a plastic body uh, and little metal insert now the main problem with these is that if you over tighten them you'll wreck the threads the plastic threads and you'll have to throw that one away and get another one but um, that was my solution uh, and that seems to have worked and that certainly did reduce the hum but it didn't get rid of it. Another potential source of hum is from the filament wires. Now the green filament wires only carry 6.3 volts but there is a fair bit of current flowing through there to light up all the little bulbs in, uh, in your amp. And the other thing is that it's AC current. Uh, this produces an electromagnetic field around the wires and this can interact with your signal wires and not in a good way. 
Uh, the common practice is to have all your signal wires down close to the chassis and have uh, the filament wires in a twisted pair up and over. Uh, I've got too much um, signal wire up in the air so I've tucked the filament wires down into a corner of the chassis away from everything else. The other thing to consider is the grounding of the center tap of the filament winding. Now some uh, power transformers only have two filament wires coming out with no center tap in which case it is best to produce a virtual center tap. You can find more information about this elsewhere but basically it means running a 100 ohm resistor from each leg of the filament circuit to a suitable ground point. Now this transformer, uh, there's the uh, filament winding uh, on the secondary. You've got uh, 3.15 volts on each side, a green wire, often they're green, not always. And there is a center tap, which is a black wire. Now, the center tap needs to go to ground. If you connect it to the chassis, you can still uh, get some hum produced. You can raise that um, center tap above chassis ground by connecting it as I have done. Let's find it. Uh, it's this black wire here. Whoop. And I've connected that to the cathode of the 6V6. And uh, again, it's uh, busting the hum in this single ended amps. Okay, one of the things the online amp gurus will tell you is to keep your uh, your wire, your leads in your amp as short as possible within reason and uh, keep everything neat. Um, something <laughs> clearly I haven't done uh, with this build, but I do endeavor to do that and one of the things that uh, that I do is with cathode um, grounds on the preamp tubes, I tend to ground the cathodes right beside the tube socket because there's a there's a very where is it there's a very convenient little bolt there, and it's very easy just to uh, to add a tag to that. Focus on it there. Yeah, there's a little bolt there. Uh, that is if you haven't um, riveted your sockets into the chassis. There's a little bolt there. You can just add a tag to that and that's a convenient place to run a very short uh, lead uh, with your cathode uh, resistor or bypass cap or indeed just a, a dead short uh, to ground if uh, that's what's required. Um, because I thought, well, the other option is to run the cathode ground from the socket all the way up here and across and down to uh, to get to your ground bus up here and I thought well that's that's going against the rules you know you've got this big long lead flopping about there uh, but uh, as a little experimentation taught me it is better to have all your preamp grounds going to one point even if it means running a wire from the uh, uh, 12AX7 uh, socket uh, to the other side of the chassis. Uh, just run it as I've done in the corner close to, uh, to the chassis. And um, again, a uh, big thumbs up because that uh, produced another uh, good reduction in the amount of hum. The amp is not hum free but um, that is uh, probably my main takeaway that I was on the right idea having a dedicated ground bus for the preamp grounds having them uh, all connected to the bus and then one end of the bus is uh, connected to the chassis um, but there are no excuses and no exceptions all of your grounds including the grounds that would normally be put beside 
the uh, the tube shares the tube sockets um, no 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 don't do that even though it seems very convenient and neat and easy it is better to run a wire from um, pin um, pin 8 or pin 3 or whatever it is uh, all the way around so that one grounding point uh, that's my takeaway message for today and I'm going to turn the amp on so you can have a listen and uh, for a single ended amp and with uh, such a crowded chassis I'm actually pretty happy with the result uh, just before I start the demonstration, a word or two of explanation. Um, I've, if you've had a look at the uh, schematic uh, that I put up, you will notice that there's a two-way switch uh, at the input. There's only one input, but I have two positions for it, which I've labelled microphone and guitar and basically um, you may know that a lot of the very early uh, valve amplifiers certainly before 1950 the uh, inputs uh, or the bias on the uh, the first triode after the input was uh, by grid leak so that the cathode was uh, connected to earth and the uh, there was a uh, a large value resistor, usually about 5 meg, uh, to ground from the, uh, the, sig the incoming signal line, uh, sometimes with a small value capacitor in there as well. And uh, this was known as grid leak bias, and it is favoured by uh, blues harmonica players who, uh, who use those old style um, amplifiers. So I've got the option uh, in the mic position. We have a uh, almost five meg um, resistor to ground, and the cathode itself is grounded. And then if we switch to guitar, uh, that removes the uh, the grid leak resistor from the circuit, and instead we have the standard one K five cathode resistor with a 25 microfarad bypass cap um, so I think for what is essentially a very small uh, control panel so we've got room for volume tone and uh, two different um, bias options on the first triode okay so I'm getting up very close and I think you can hear that there's a little bit of hum but once I start making a bit of noise I, you'll see that the uh, uh, the floor noise is actually quite low and compared to the signal <laughs> something out of that and uh, if you need some more technical information there are lots of uh, very fine experts online um, who can uh, can help you out with that so just look around psionic audio uncle doug uh, brad's guitar garage to name but a few and fazio electric um, so uh, i will have some more youtube videos coming up soon but right now it's uh, coming up to four o'clock in the afternoon in the subtropics in Australia. It's well over 30 degrees and the humidity is very high. Uh, I'm going inside for a coldie. <laughs> 